All right, guys, it's finally time to tackle the biggest project I've ever attempted. The biggest, most extensive Lost Media Iceberg you have ever seen. Now let me stop you right there, I know what you might be thinking. Source, why is this video only an hour long? Those are rookie numbers. How can this be the complete Lost Media Iceberg? I'm unsubbing, goodbye. Well, you'd be right. Well, I mean, not to unsub, please don't do that. But I mean, this is kind of lightweight. I mean, I did do a three and a half hour long iceberg. But the big twist here is that this is only part one, and one tier of this massive iceberg. That's right, I might be crazy for even attempting this. This is definitely going to be my biggest undertaking in the history of this channel. Like, you thought the unused and cut video game content iceberg was long? No. That was only around 200 entries. This iceberg has 1,000, so each part of this series is basically going to be its own full-length iceberg video. It's going to be an endurance challenge for not only me, but also you as well. Let's see if we can really make it through all 8 tiers of this behemoth of an iceberg. Will I even make it to the end? I honestly don't know, but I'm gonna try. So shout out to the original creator of this iceberg, Equirep, on Reddit. And without further ado, let me not waste too much more time with this intro, and let's jump into the first tier of the complete Lost Media Iceberg. Cigarettes and Valentines So starting it off with our first entry here, we have an unreleased album from the rock band Green Day, which was recorded in 2003. Although before it could be finished, the master tapes were stolen from the studio, resulting in the band starting over from scratch and creating their hit album American Idiot. There are apparently backups of the album that exist, although it seems that they won't be officially released as they weren't the same as the originals, as stated by the bassist Mike Dern. There are five songs confirmed to be on the album, including the title track, which has a live version that was released, and another song called Too Much Too Soon, which was officially released in 2004, and three other songs which are lost, called Waste Away, Sleepyhead, and Dropout. Jeff the Killer Unedited Photo Alright, at this point I'm assuming everyone has heard of Jeff the Killer, so I'm not going to waste any time with the lore here. But also, most people probably associate the creepypasta with this iconic image, one that appears to be heavily edited, with the original unedited image nowhere to be found. However, this image has existed since before the Jeff the Killer creepypasta, but we still don't know its true origin. The earliest known version was posted on July 24th, 2005, under this file name, and the image then continued to circulate around on various message boards before eventually being edited further and becoming this version, which first appeared on November 16th, 2005. And despite many investigations and videos looking into it, the original unedited image has not been found, even with the many supposed leads. Doctor Who Lost Episodes So there's quite a few lost episodes of Doctor Who. In fact, there are apparently 97 missing episodes. And this here is the list. Some have surviving clips and stills, while some just have audio tracks, and others which are nearly complete or reconstructed. And yeah, I don't really know anything about Doctor Who, but hopefully this means something to someone out there. Shout out to all the UK viewers. Library of Alexandria Okay, so we've got some historical lost media here. Some real important stuff. On the same level as Jeff the Killer, you know. As this was once one of the largest libraries in the ancient world, and was called the Great Library of Alexandria, and was found in Egypt. It was said to house in the range of 40,000 to 400,000 scrolls, as well as around 100,000 books. Although a lot of that material was lost. And I mean, it makes sense. This was made in the BC era, which was, uh, a long time ago. But there was also a fire that burned a significant part of the library, caused by Julius Caesar. So yeah, definitely some lost media there. Michael Jackson's Vault So what I think this refers to are the lost and unreleased songs of Michael Jackson, which were stored away in his, quote, vault. Anyway, he has a ton of unreleased songs. So many, in fact, that it would be almost impossible to talk about all of them. 
Some of these have leaked, and there are snippets of others, and some have even been officially released after his death. And these are just some of the ones that we know about. There are definitely more that are kept hidden away, that we know nothing about. Also, this entry has a kind of ominous title, like it could be referring to something else that's hidden, but I don't really know. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Phantom Blood This version of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a movie adaptation of the first part, Phantom Blood, and was originally released in select theaters in Japan in 2007 for a short run, never releasing again after the fact. No home media release at all, and not even a recording of the movie exists. Only segments of the film have been found and reconstructed. There's also a test animation for the film from 2004, but that's about it. And it's really interesting because for some reason, they really don't want to release or even talk about this film at all it seems. And by them, I mean the people involved with this film, including the director Junichi Hayama who, when asked about the film in 2022, had this to say, quote, I don't want you to see me angry and pissed off, so it is better if I don't answer this question. Okay then. Also, it's been alleged that there are actually cam recordings of the film, but they still haven't been found as of yet. Minecraft Lost Versions Now everyone knows what Minecraft is, I don't have to explain it but you might be surprised to hear that somehow, even with this incredibly popular game, there are still lost versions and builds out there. A lot, in fact. So much so that there is an incredibly thorough list on the Lost Media Wiki showing all known versions, as well as what is notable about them and when they were made, as well as the proof of their existence at all. Because apparently there are quite a few fake builds. Kido Gata. This one's a doozy. One of the most prevalent lost media cases in recent memory. I mean, we could be here forever going into everything we know in regards to this case, but there have been full videos on this topic already. So I'll just give the basic rundown here. This is a lost Japanese PSA or commercial that allegedly aired in the late 90s or early 2000s. And there are quite a few conflicting reports and speculation on what this video could really be, or if it even exists at all. But what is known is that it originated on Japanese message boards in the early 2000s, around 2004 more specifically. Many people have since claimed to see that video, and describe it as having two white humanoid figures lacking any features that fade in and out, as sounds of a railroad sign can be heard in the background with some even claiming that there was Japanese text reading, Every two seconds, a man dies on Earth. And there has been an extensive hunt for this piece of lost media over the years, and there have been some good leads and even some recreations and hoaxes as well. But it looks like the real one still hasn't been found. But many still hold out hope that this lost PSA is still out there somewhere, waiting to be found while skeptics believe that it is merely a Japanese urban legend. Christine Chubbuck Video So I'm not going to go too in-depth here with this one. Most of you have probably heard about it already, and I don't really like covering real-life cases like this, especially ones that are this graphic. But this lost video concerns the death of a news anchor that was broadcast on live TV in 1975. And honestly, this is one of those things that I don't think needs to be found. El Apostol Now, this one is really notable as it's thought that this lost Argentine film could have been the first animated feature film ever made, releasing all the way back in 1917. The film was 70 minutes long and was made using paper cutouts instead of traditional hand-drawn animation that became popular much after this film was made. And the film itself was said to be a political satire focusing on the president of Argentina at the time, who meets Jupiter, the god of thunder, and uses his help to destroy Buenos Aires, and rebuild it before he eventually wakes up and realizes it was all a dream. However, none of the film is known to have survived, and was most likely destroyed in a fire in 1926, although a flyer and a couple of character designs of the film do exist. 
Grand Theft Auto V Single Player DLC. So this one is kind of sad. GTA V, as some people may remember, was supposed to get a story mode DLC, similar to that of The Ballad of Gay Tony and The Lost and the Damned, shortly after release sometime in 2014. However, as we know, that didn't really happen. And it looks like we can blame that on the huge success of GTA Online, because it seems that Rockstar shifted all their attention, understandably, to that component, as it was just raking in so much money thanks to the shark cards. And it seems like a lot of that content did end up being repurposed, at least in online. Such as with the Doomsday and Diamond Casino heist updates. But originally it was planned that there would be three different episodes that were going to be available. One for each of the main game's protagonists. One being a quote, Agent Trevor episode, which was adapted into the Doomsday heist. Another being a zombie apocalypse episode, similar to Undead Nightmare from Red Dead Redemption, which sounds so cool, with Franklin as the protagonist, I really wish they would have done this, and an alien invasion episode starring Michael, with there also being a final casino heist which was made into the GTA Online Diamond Casino heist. Taiwan 2001 this lost game was apparently a parody of the infamous Hong Kong 97, and was created by a Japanese company KusoSoft as a spoof of HappySoft for the Super Famicom. Not much is known about the gameplay, although it's assumed to be very similar to that of Hong Kong 97. All that exists are a few screenshots of the game. The story is also said to be very similar, but this time takes place in Taiwan in 2001, where you play as protagonist Wang Shou Min, and are sent by the Taiwanese government to reform the Chinese mainlanders invading Taiwan. And there are some reviews of the game, and even a download link has been found, although that link can't be accessed and the game cannot be downloaded. Yeah Yeah Beebus 1 so Yeah Yeah Beebus 1, not to be confused with the sequel Yeah Yeah Beebus 2, a sequel to a game that might not even exist. Yep. This is an alleged video game that was first referenced in June of 1989, on an issue of a mail order game service, and was listed under the price of $33.95. But it may not have been a real game at all. So then what is it? I mean, it appeared on multiple game listings after this as well. Well, some think it could have just been a placeholder, a bad translation, or even some sort of copyright trap to see if other companies would copy their list directly. But the most popular theory is that this title is actually a bad translation of another game called Rai Rai Baby Kyonshi no Amida Daiboken. That was a mouthful. <laughs> but if it is a different obscure game, it has never been found. Imagine Dragons, Wish You Well. This is one of the earliest songs of the now immensely popular band Imagine Dragons. However, this song was never recorded for any of their albums, and instead has only been heard through live performance recordings. There is no studio version of the track that has been found, only a small snippet. So maybe there is a studio version that exists in full, but as of yet, it hasn't surfaced. 1890 Census So most of you probably know what a census is, but if you don't, the quick rundown is it's a count of the population as well as some other data concerning age, race, sex, households, marital status, and other things related to said population. And every year the United States government has been creating censuses. Uh, is that how you say that? Okay yeah, censuses of the population. And the 1890 one in particular had most of its materials destroyed in a fire in 1921, with about 25% of it completely destroyed and somewhere around 15 to 50% damaged by smoke and water. Although there are still some data figures which are available, such as state and city populations. Epic Cycle Books Alright, we've got some more ancient lost media here. Literally. Lost ancient Greek text, told through epic poems, hence the name. Also related to the Trojan War, just like many other famous works like the Iliad and the Odyssey, 
which are actually said to be a part of this collection. Although those are the only two that have survived in their entirety. And while some still have lines that exist passed down through oral traditions from some of the stories, the rest of the text isn't known, and the full epic can only be told through summary adaptations of the story's material. These epics include Cypria, Aethiopis, Little Iliad, Ilio Persis, Nostoi, and Telegony. Definitely butchered those names, so let's just move on. Twitch plays Pokemon early streams. Yeah, we go from some of the most important pieces of lost ancient literature to Twitch playthroughs. That's lost media for you, I guess. Really covers a wide range of topics. Anyway, this is still an important piece of history, I guess, because this was a kind of social experiment ran through Twitch, which would use commands from those watching the stream to actually play the game, which unsurprisingly became an extremely popular stream, with a viewership high of 120,000 current viewers, and a total of over 30 million views. However, despite this stream being a massive success, for some reason the first 35 hours of the stream were not recorded, or at least the footage of this time frame has not surfaced online. London After Midnight London After Midnight is a lost silent horror film created in 1927 that starred Lon Chaney as Professor Burke, who investigates the death of a rich guy named Roger in his mansion. And he can't figure out the culprit through normal means, so as you do, he like dressed up as a vampire or something and used hypnosis to find the culprit. Kind of a strange movie synopsis, not gonna lie to you, but apparently the movie did pretty well at the time. But unfortunately, the only known copy of the film was destroyed in the MGM fire in 1965. Food Fight Original Version Ah yes, the infamous Food Fight. Quite the interesting backstory behind this one. Basically, Food Fight is known as one of the worst 3D CGI animated movies of all time, despite starring many big names in Hollywood. The movie just looks pretty terrible, but there is a reason behind that. Production first began on the movie all the way back in 2002, and surprisingly there was some hype built up around this film. But in December of that year, the footage for the original version was lost forever. Originally, it was stated that the hard drives containing the original version were stolen, but in reality they were deleted and the team had to start from scratch with a new approach due to a limited budget, which resulted in the final product released in 2012. Despite the original target for the film being for Christmas of 2003, and that original version was about 60% completed before it was scrapped, and it looks like it's gone for good. There are only some trailers and screenshots from this version that still exist today. Slamfest 99 Arguably one of the most infamous pieces of lost media that is still searched for today, Slamfest 99 is a livestream that took place on April 24th, 1999, from 11am to 1pm in Las Vegas, which had a promotional event for the video game Super Smash Bros, the OG one for the N64. And this event had fights between costumed versions of the characters featured in the game, such as Mario, Pikachu, Yoshi, and Donkey Kong. And despite a ton of searching and some leads along the way, the stream has never been found. Although some screenshots and images of the costumed characters do exist. There's even quite a few summaries as to what actually happened at the event, such as this one from Zelda 64 Planet, which reads, quote, Mario and Donkey Kong would start the match. Donkey Kong, being much larger than our favorite plumber, quickly took Mario out. Yoshi came in and got his revenge on the gorilla. Pikachu would come in for the monkey only to be knocked down by Yoshi's lethal tail. Then before anyone knew it, Mario went crazy. He wiped out Donkey Kong, Pikachu, and his own teammate Yoshi. Ultimately, the match would end in a crash which knocked out everyone resulting in a draw. Everyone's a winner, the announcer yelled. Super Bowl 2 
So this lost football game is the second ever Super Bowl, that being the championship game of the NFL, which aired on January 14th, 1968. That's right, somehow one of the most televised sporting events that takes place each year was lost. I mean, it was a long time ago, but still. There are many pictures of the event, but no recordings of the actual broadcast have been found. Although it was thought for a time that a copy existed in the NFL vault and was going to be officially released, but that never ended up happening. However, there are videos on YouTube which have certain clips and highlights from the event, but not the full game. Ruby Dung Now, we already talked about the many, and I mean many, lost versions of Minecraft that exist, but I didn't mention Ruby Dung which is not actually Minecraft, but rather a kind of precursor to it, created by the same developer, Notch, which has quite a few similarities, and some of the textures in the game were reused for Minecraft, but we don't know too much else about the game, other than that it was inspired by another game called Dwarf Fortress, and all we really have are some screenshots that Notch has shared of the game, and for now, it doesn't look likely that we'll ever see a real build of this title. The Superman, 1933. Interestingly, despite villain versions of Superman becoming kind of a staple in entertainment today, the original Superman was actually a villain, believe it or not, in his debut in 1933 in a short story called The Reign of Superman. But uh, that's not what this is. Just thought that was interesting. The Lost Superman comic from 1933 is the second appearance after this one, in which the character was actually made into a hero for the first time. But sadly, this comic is lost forever, as according to one of the creators, he burned it in a fire out of frustration at the fact that they couldn't get a company to publish it. Although a few years later, they eventually would, and Superman would go on to become one of the most recognizable superheroes ever. The only thing that remains of the 1933 version, though, is the cover art, which shows a very different looking depiction of Superman. Fez 2 This was at one point a planned sequel to the popular indie hit Fez, before it was eventually cancelled, sort of abruptly, by its creator Phil Fish in a Twitter post. And there's not really too much else to say here because ever since its cancellation, there hasn't been any sort of build for this game that's ever been found. Wu-Tang Clan, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin So this one has a really interesting story behind it. This album was actually the last album of the Wu-Tang Clan with all members performing in it, and the gimmick behind it was that it wasn't to be released for 88 years after it was created as there was only one pressing ever of the album, which eventually ended up in the hands of Martin Shkreli, this dude, for winning an auction and paying $2 million for it. However, Shkreli was arrested in 2017, and in order to pay off his debts, the US government actually auctioned off the album again, to which then it was bought by a crypto group. And even with all the times that this thing changed hands, and was even played at parties apparently, some of the songs are still lost on here. Now, there are snippets of some of the songs, and even full tracks, such as the first song on the album, which have leaked. But the full album still has not been uploaded online. Scare PewDiePie Multiplayer also known as Scare PewDiePie Season 2, this was a planned continuation of PewDiePie's YouTube Red original series, and was actually fully filmed, despite never airing as it was intended in March of 2017. But instead it ended up being cancelled in February due to this infamous video in which PewDiePie did, uh, well, if you know, you know. I'm not trying to get demonetized here. Point is, this is kind of when the YouTube ad apocalypse started, and YouTube in general started getting a lot of backlash, and so then no longer wanted to associate with PewDiePie and cancelled the project. So it seems footage or even episodes of this season are unlikely to ever surface in any official manner. Unless, you know, someone leaks it, but even PewDiePie himself said he couldn't release any of the content, due to obvious legal reasons. The Beatles' Carnival of Light 
This is an experimental track created by the famous rock band The Beatles that was said to be somewhere around 14 minutes in length and was only ever played at two events ever, but was still nonetheless recorded in 1967, but has still never been officially released and remains lost to this day. Although Paul McCartney has stated that he still has the master tapes in a 2008 interview, and it seems like he's just looking for the right opportunity to release it but so far, it hasn't been released. I mean, I can kind of see why. It's a really experimental track from what I hear, and I mean, these are the same guys that did Revolution 9, remember? And that actually got released. So who really knows how weird this song is? But McCartney himself described it by saying, quote, I said all I want you to do is just wander around all the stuff, bang it, shout, play it. It doesn't need to make any sense. Hit a drum, then wander onto the piano, hit a few notes, and just wander around. So yeah, maybe we will see a release of this song in the future, but for now, it remains Beatles Lost Media. Columbine Doomwad Well, uh, yikes. Not gonna talk too much about this, but basically this is an alleged wad, or basically a custom level for the game Doom. It was created by Eric Harris, which was of the Columbine campus. Pretty disturbing stuff. Kurt Cobain's Ren and Stimpy song. I've talked about this one before, I'm pretty sure, but it's kind of up in the air if this one ever really existed or not. Basically, Kurt Cobain of the famous rock band Nirvana was a huge fan of the cartoon series Ren and Stimpy. So much so, in fact, that he wanted to write a song for the show. And this was even before he was famous, before Nirvana had their breakout hit. And this is all based on a story told by Billy West, voice actor of Stimpy, which was told on a podcast, where he revealed the executives heard the song but didn't end up using it, as they really had no idea who he was at the time. A pretty crazy story, but this is the only evidence that this even happened and the song has never been found. Easy e Heat Melts Cube My god, I feel like I've talked about this song at least three times on this channel, so I'm sorry if you've seen those videos, but here we go again, I guess. So this is a lost diss track that may or may not even exist, created by Easy e in the 90s, targeted at Ice Cube, hence the title. However, the two did actually reconcile before Eazy-E's death in 1995, and so it's possible that this diss track, or EP as some have claimed it to be, was not released due to that fact. And there are even rumors that when Ice Cube first heard the track, he left the studio crying, but take that with a grain of salt. But still, this EP or diss track have never surfaced. Nirvana, Opinion This is another partially lost song from Nirvana, in that there is a 1990 live recording, but not a studio version, as this was one of the earliest songs the group ever produced. However, in the documentary Cobain Montage of Heck, a short snippet of a different version of the track was used, which has never resurfaced in its entirety and it's thought that this version could be a lost studio recording. 15,000 Dibujos Also known as 15,000 Drawings in English, or 15 mil Dibujos, this animated film dates all the way back to the late 30s and early 40s, and was created in Chile, and apparently was even seen by Walt Disney himself, which motivated the director and his team to finish this passion project that was done by only one guy and his family and friends, with the film finally releasing in 1942. However, since then, the film has become lost media. Some clips from the show were showcased in a documentary, and some test footage has also been found, but the full film remains lost. XXX Tentacion Lost EPs and Songs XXX Tentacion, also known as Josse Onfroy, was a rapper who was tragically killed in the summer of 2018, despite having a huge career ahead of him. But he started from pretty humble beginnings, posting his songs on places like SoundCloud and Facebook, 
which unsurprisingly has led to some lost EPs and songs from way back in the day, since he was making music since at least 2012 or 2013. And a lot of these songs and EPs are even known about, as can be seen on this list. Final Fantasy 64 also called Final Fantasy VI, the interactive CG game, was a tech demo and future planned installment of the Final Fantasy series for the Nintendo 64, although it was never released. This game demo was shown off at an event called SIGGRAPH95, and there is a recording of the gameplay, however the playable demo itself has not yet been found. Grand Theft Auto 64 Again for the N64 we have another game, this time a port of the original Grand Theft Auto, which was actually said to feature new stuff, not just a standard port, including new levels and better graphics. The game was shown off at E3 1999 and was about halfway done, however there is no gameplay of the N64 version of GTA, and only a little while after, the game was officially cancelled and no builds of the game or even any gameplay at all have surfaced. All we really have are magazine scans of the game. Half-Life 2 Ravenholm Ravenholm was the working title of a game in the Half-Life series that was being developed in 2007 and 2008 by Arcane Studios, not Valve. And in this game, you would play as protagonist Adrian Shepard from Half-Life Opposing Force, who would work alongside Father Grigori. But sadly, this project was cancelled with only about a year left in development. However, pretty recently, despite the project being cancelled and lost, a media company named Noclip created an hour-long documentary on the game, which showed quite a lot of gameplay for the title. Drake and Josh Pilot Before the pilot episode of Drake and Josh, the hit Nickelodeon sitcom aired in January of 2004, there was actually an earlier pilot episode that was created for the series back in 2002 that never aired. And it's been said that not much is different plot-wise in the episode, but the main difference is that the character, Walter Nichols, was portrayed by a different actor, Stephen First rather than Jonathan Goldstein. As of now, there are only a few short clips of the episode, as well as screenshots that have been found. Super Y Pilot This is yet another lost pilot episode of a television series, this time the CGI animated series Super Y, which had an original pilot made for it back in 1999. However, this pitch was actually rejected, although the show would end up coming to fruition on PBS in 2007. And the original pilot episode has never been released since, with no footage surfacing of it online. But in February of 2021, a theme song for the pilot was actually found, and in May of that same year, the full audio of the episode was found, but no video sadly. So for now, all we have are screenshots and these pieces of audio. Backyardigans Pilots With an S, yeah. Because there were two pilots, a live action one created in 1998 called Me and My Friends, and another CGI animated pilot based on that first one created in 2002. And yeah, surprisingly, both of them are lost. For Me and My Friends, there is a very short clip as well as many pictures of the set and costumes, but the actual episode is nowhere to be found. As for the second CGI pilot made in 2002, well, this one is said to follow a similar structure to that of an episode in Season 1 titled The Heart of the Jungle. But like the 1998 pilot, this one has only a very short clip, as well as some screenshots that are available. Sailor Mouth Uncensored The absolute classic Spongebob episode. Ever since it was first released, people have theorized that somewhere out there, there was a cut of the episode without the censorship or at least the raw recordings of the voice actors, which contain the actual swears, before they were censored in the final cut of the episode. This was only further fueled by the fact that Spongebob voice actor Tom Kenny said that they tried using other words in place of the swears, but it just didn't feel natural, and so they really did swear. 
So somewhere within Nickelodeon, the original audio tracks without censoring do exist. But it's unlikely that we will ever get to hear them, unfortunately. Although there are compilations on YouTube of the Spongebob voice actors cursing, so that's the closest we're going to get, I guess. Saban Moon This is cool because this was just recently found by Lost Media YouTuber Ray Mona who created a really in-depth and just overall really well-made video about the topic and how she acquired this Lost Pilot episode, which was a proof of concept that was never aired and was an adaptation of the Sailor Moon manga and anime series. However, this series was never picked up, but in 2022, Raymona did actually acquire a copy of the pilot through the Library of Congress and was even able to post it to her YouTube channel. So if you want to learn more about this, I definitely recommend watching her documentary on that process. Ludwig van Beethoven, Sheet Music So some more really, really old Lost Media here. This time the Lost Works of Beethoven. Not too surprising, this dude lived in the 1700s, so yeah. A lot of his lost pieces do have some fragments that have survived, however, or they have been recreated, or sometimes certain parts or certain instruments from his orchestral pieces have been found, but either way, not all of his works are complete. And I'm sure there are some more pieces that we don't even know about, that were never published or were just lost to time. Meso Blues this is another really iconic and recognized piece of Lost Media, but if you haven't heard of it, I'll give you the rundown. This was an animated short created by Van Partible in 1993 for his senior thesis project about an Elvis impersonator, which would eventually become the Cartoon Network show Johnny Bravo. However, that original short is lost, and only short clips exist that could be found as a feature in season 1 of Johnny Bravo and those clips are actually muted. And Van Partible even revealed that he had no plans on releasing the short, although he does have a copy which he occasionally shows to friends and students in his animation classes. Batman vs. Dracula This was an unofficial Batman parody film created in 1967 about a scientist who resurrects Dracula to fight Batman. Sounds kinda wild, but this is actually one of three Batman Dracula movies. What the hell. But sadly, not much else is known about the film. And it is entirely lost. No footage of the film exists online as of yet. But there is this theatrical poster, as well as other photos of the film itself in black and white. Star Wars 1313 at E3 2012, this Star Wars game was officially revealed, although it would be not too long after that it would be cancelled and kind of forgotten sadly. Despite quite a bit of work being done on the game, they even showed full gameplay footage, and for the time it looked pretty good. And it was also interesting and notable for having an M for Mature rating plan as the story was going to have darker and more mature themes, and you would even play as Boba Fett, which is pretty cool. But yeah, after Disney acquired Star Wars, LucasArts shut down the whole project, and no builds of the game have leaked online. All we really have is the gameplay that was already shown. Pink Floyd Household Objects Created sometime in the early 70s, this was an experimental album of Pink Floyd's that was never released. And like the title suggests, the songs in this album were made using random objects you could find around your house, be it beer bottles, wine glasses, newspapers, stuff like that. And despite the album being finished and recorded presumably, most of the songs remain lost except for a few. Notably the song Wine Glasses, which, you guessed it, uses audio from a wine glass. Although it doesn't necessarily sound like it. Attack of the Killer Rabbits from Outer Space Also called Killer Freaks from Outer Space, was a game being developed in 2011 as, get ready for this, a horror spin-off of the Raving Rabbits franchise, which was a first-person shooter. Yeah, pretty crazy. Eventually though, the devs realized that this kind of violent, horror-themed FPS was not suited for a kid-friendly franchise like Rabbids. 
which led to the name change to Killer Freaks from Outer Space, which even got a reveal trailer. However, the idea was further reworked into Zombie U for the Wii U, and later released as just Zombie on other consoles and PC. As for the original Rabbids and Killer Freaks builds, those are still lost to this day. Shrek Chris Farley version Oh boy, here we go. So everyone knows about the movie Shrek, and most people would recognize the voice of Mike Myers for the titular character. But before he landed the role, Chris Farley was going to be the original voice actor, and even recorded many lines for an early version of Shrek, before his untimely passing in 1997. Which led to Shrek having to be recast, and even a whole new design and direction for the movie. Now, not all of the footage and audio from the Chris Farley version is available, but there is quite a bit. Especially recently, as the I Feel Good test animation was found right here on YouTube. Metroid Dread While this game may have been released somewhat recently in 2021 for the Nintendo Switch, this game has actually had a long and storied development, going all the way back to the days of the original DS. And in 2005, this game was first realized as a 2D side-scroller for the handheld console. But this version was never finished, and no builds of the game have ever surfaced online. Hey Arnold, the Jungle Movie Okay, I know I keep saying this, and I'll stop from now on. Uh, I'm sorry, but god bro, I gotta apologize to all the OGs of this channel. This has got to be like the fourth time I've talked about this movie. Anyways, this was a film for the Hey Arnold animated series that was supposed to be released in originally 2002. But instead, Nickelodeon opted for Arnold Saves the Neighborhood. Although eventually, many years later, they would actually make the Jungle movie, and it would release in 2017. However, this version is different from the one that was worked on in the early 2000s, and all we have from that original project is a 40 second test animation. Rude Removal Uncensored This refers to the infamous controversial episode from the animated series Dexter's Laboratory, which aired in 1997. And kind of like Sailor Mouth, this episode featured a lot of censored swearing, which never actually aired on Cartoon Network due to fear of backlash. And before it was even discovered in its censored format, many people didn't even believe it was real. Although that censored version was eventually found, and has been shown at certain events and conventions over the years. And some have even claimed that an uncensored version was also shown. And it was confirmed to exist in 2017 by Craig McCracken. Although this version has not surfaced. Sonic the Hedgehog Demo, Tokyo Toy Show 1990 this was a Sonic prototype build, one of the earliest in fact, and was shown off in June of 1990 as a playable tech demo. However, this version had a couple notable differences from the final version of the game, such as unused enemies, different sprites, different areas, assets, and many other small details. Anyway, this version was only seen back then in 1990, and despite other Sonic prototypes leaking online in the past, this one still remains lost to this day. Mario Takes America. What a title. This lost and cancelled Mario game was one meant for the great Philips CDI console. You know, the one with gems such as these. It was created as an edutainment game which would have Mario exploring different places around the US, such as New York and Hollywood, and it even used full motion video. But development was slow and it was quite taxing on the hardware for some reason. So the game ended up being canned. There is no build of the game that has been found, nor any footage, although one of the developers claims to have two VHS tapes which have footage of the game, although he cannot actually release them. So we only have a couple of screenshots and magazine articles concerning the game. Super Mario 128 Another piece of Mario Lost Media, this time a GameCube and later Wii title that was first seen at Space World 2000, but was revealed in a Nintendo Power issue in 1997, under the working title of Super Mario 128, which led many to assume that it was a sequel to Mario 64. But at some point, the project was cancelled. 
and some of its elements were used in other games, such as Metroid Prime and Super Mario Galaxy. However, all we have is the original tech demo from 2000, and no builds of the game have ever surfaced. Doraemon 1993 there is so much Doraemon Lost Media, so I'm not too sure what this one is exactly referring to, but I think it could possibly be the short film A Thrilling Solar Car, which was made in 1992, not 1993, but I don't know, it's the closest thing I could find. And this was a short animated film that premiered alongside other Doraemon short films in Japanese theaters, and apparently it was pretty popular as there was even a model kit from the film that was made. But as of now, the movie is actually lost, with there being no home media release of any kind, and only small clips, storyboards, and screenshots available online. Shrek Cringe Compilation Commercial So there isn't actually a cringe compilation commercial, sadly, but there is a lost commercial that happens to have a frame that was used for a cringe compilation meme, which became pretty popular, actually and is basically how this whole search started in the first place. And it's believed that this image originated from a commercial sometime in 2003 or 2004 for the HP Photosmart 945 camera. Which makes sense, as there were other HP Shrek commercials from around that time, and despite other images from the ad being revealed, no footage from the actual commercial has been found as of yet. Groupie so this is another one here that I've gotta kinda be careful about. Groupie is a short film that was created by the music artist Marilyn Manson at one of his house parties in the late 90s. And as far as the premise for the film goes, I can't say too much, other than it stars a girl who ends up having to do some really disturbing things. And this is only the stuff we know about, and yeah, I can't really go into too much more detail on that, but there isn't much of this film available at all. Only short clips that were featured in Manson's other projects. And apparently the film was so messed up that his former manager said if he were ever to release it, it would end his career or have him sent to jail. So, uh, yeah. Alright, and that wraps it up for part one of this insane iceberg chart. Honestly, this first tier wasn't too bad. Kind of some more basic stuff here, not really any heavy hitters in here I guess, and we only had 57 entries today. But don't worry, I promise you it will only get crazier and longer from here. So stay tuned for part 2, which should hopefully be coming out sooner rather than later if I ever want to be able to finish this series. Anyway, this has been me Sourcebrew, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you with the next video. Peace.